a great honor, privilege and pleasure that you are doing it for Rakshminarana Global Music Festival. Of course, sir. And it's really, I can't thank you enough. You, the very first film itself, you know, you became the most famous music director instantly after the first film in Tamil, then in Hindi, Roja. After that, you know, Slumdog Millionaire, which brought not only L'Oreal to you, but also to India, two Oscars. Can you tell what was in your mind when all these things happened all of a sudden? As you know, like, um, you were also a neighbor when my parents lived in Mylapur and you talked about my father a lot. So, I think my father um, had set a very high standard as a human being. He, uh, the way he was non-stop working for the family, you know, like, because we, he wanted to get a house for us and he worked, overworked, spoiled his health. And so when I came in, after he passed away, my mother said, music is your life, what your father did, so take it up. For me, the first 12 years of my life was the whole childhood had gone, age of 12 to 22. So there was a kind of rebelliousness, like I don't want to work like my dad, who worked, you know, day and night and he lost his health and he passed away. <clears throat> so that gave me the thing that I should do quality work and do less work intentionally so that I can have a life, I can learn from life, I can experience the beauty. Because studio life is always like 7 to 1, 2 to 9, 7 to 1, 2 to 9. You become a slave to it. And it's a trap which you can't get out. And I was seeing that people had lost their zest for life and they were like machines. Oh, there's money coming in, so let's work day and night, day and night. Something told me there's much more to life. And while working, I wanted to learn more. I mean, like, people are paying me to learn. <laughs> That's been still there, you know, that when I work, I want to learn more, I want to explore more, so that if I feel excited, the audience is going to feel excited. So that started from my first movie. And that worked out because the sense of inquisitive curiosity actually brings in interest for anyone. So the music has curiosity. It asks questions, it answers questions, takes you, and we're trying to find another realm for them to, you know, it's not just notes, it's creating a mood, a feel, creating something which is, which they can be transported from the mundaneness of life. We all live in mundaneness, but I think music, when you go into it, we don't see the time stretches. And that stretching of time and that happiness which we see in an audience, you know, the eyes which has so much love, so much enthusiasm, so much of expectations from the eyes is what I think drives me. So from the first movie to now. Fantastic. But when you change the whole style of uh, composition in the movie, which completely changed the whole thing, all of a sudden, um, they used to you know, record with a lot of people in the studio and live takes and, you know, 100 musicians, 50 musicians. But you brought much more access to the public, but using almost like a minimalistic approach, but beautiful arrangements. How did that thought came to you? By the time I came in, the equipments which are very expensive, like, you know, Magnetic was only three tracks. So we used to record Telugu movies and, you know, Tamil, maximum they would have eight tracks for Tamil recording or Telugu or anything. I had a 16 track because I came through jingles. I got interested in jingles and I was setting up a jingle studio which had 16 tracks and I said, I have 16 tracks, there's a luxury, so I can do so many things which normal uh, you know, composers at that time could not, they didn't think about it, they, they thought, no, we won't get the depth, we need of these big machines. All the big machines became smaller. So I was lucky, I was in the transitional period of technological change, which helped me a lot. Gave me a lot of time to experiment, a lot of time to fail, so that nobody knew my failure, they only know my success. The failures are like within the box, within the studio. Oh, this is uncool. We come back again and we try again. We come back again, we try again. So that freedom is what I got from having a home studio. You're not being judged, you know, like 70 people are not watching you, the orchestra isn't watching you. Oh, the director didn't like what he did. The, you know, the producer didn't like what he did. He rejected it. So there's no gossip. There's no need for any validation from people are watching spontaneously. But there was time incubation and, you know, within the studio, there was peace, there was freedom. And that freedom actually brought in, I said, why can't we do this? Why can't we do it in studio? Why can't we do a mix for movies and 
one for the CD. It doesn't have to be that I have the time and I'm, of course, we all need to get money, but beyond money, I think there was a passion. There was something which drove me, it was like, when the West can do it, why can't we do it? When we listen to their music, why can't they listen to our music? This is the question I was constantly asked, why? And then why became better production, better quality, better distribution, better transfer, better mastering. And that is still drives me. Like, <laughs> sometimes, you know, I see that our movies go till the Oscar, they don't get it. The wrong movies are being sent for Oscar. And he's just like, don't. <laughs> and uh, we have to be in another person's shoes to see this side. I have to be in a Westerner's shoe to see what is happening here. I have to be in my shoes to see what they're doing. So there's geopolitics, there's racism, there's so many different things, but to, you've done that before. You've done, you played with some of the most amazing orchestras and musicians and you all did it before, all of us. <laughs> so you were asking me the question. But um, the reaching the masses from the first movie, and also with totally changing the whole thing, because whenever anybody starts, they will try to do what is already, I mean, proven success. So they won't take the challenges to do different things. I think strangely, there was a denial, not the denial, I think it was like boredom. Like, I don't want to do the stuff which everybody is doing. Even if I do one, I want to be happy with it and I'll quit. I want to do something which is amazing. So getting Maniji, Maniratunji as a mentor and a first director, because he, I told him my wishes. I told him my, this is my foundation. This is my constitution foundation, which I want great lyrics. I want a great production. I want my music to reach all over the world. I don't want this to be in the box. I, I want the best poetry. I want to produce it in a way where I feel like I should buy the music and listen to myself. If I see it on a shelf, I should buy it. Well, I, I did it for other people. You know, that's not the right. So he helped me in getting Mr. Vairamuthu. He helped me uh, when I was frustrated, when people start confusing me. Oh, what are you doing? This music people want to listen to. You need to put, you know, the same old sound. And suddenly I would call him, said, this is what they're saying. I said, just don't ignore all this stuff. This is fantastic. You know, he just gave that encouragement. And my mother, of course, you know, family was my sisters and mom. And, um, I was the only male member at the time. <laughs> and they were like amazing support, like a, like a fort. And that was enough, I think. And then there was friends like Rajiv Menon, Tirlok, and so Bharat Bala, so I was working. So working with them actually uh, made me find a whole new world, the younger world, the modern world, with advertising and Oh, there's another life here, other than the studios, they're getting caught in, you know, Kodamba Kambay, you're working like a slave, 721, 721, there's nothing else. Yeah, that changed the whole perspective. Who was your, uh, you have like any guru you studied from music or you self-taught? Or... Oh my God, so many gurus. Like guru in the sense, if I need to know about, if I know a little bit of Bhairavi, it's because of your composition which we played today. So don't leave me as, as when I realized, oh, by the way, you can play like this, you can change the key, but not changing the notes of a raga. And I kind of took that note by note, slowed down the tape and took all that stuff. I think one composition changes your perspective about a raga. And that composition of yours with your whole band <coughs> changed me for by the way, Sindhu by the way. And of course, I had my Jacob John, Dakshana Muthi Moses and Nityananda Master who taught me how to hear a note and transcribe it. And of course, we are like we are all Ekalavas of so many the geniuses of classical composers, it's Karnataka or Hindustani. Also the other thing is, I mean, if anybody looking at you, they'll say that you have got everything, you have achieved everything. Musically, you know. So do you feel that you have anything left you want to do? Which achievement is a perspective, it's very subjective. I feel like I feel like pulling our people, whether the musicians, we all have to pull each other up constantly. You know, it's very easy for us to go settle up abroad, have a nice life, earn in dollars. But then somewhere you're still not, it's like oil and water. You know, if you're one I want to feel, I want to see the faces of our people. I want to enjoy my music. 
I want to take my their criticism and I want to learn from them. I want to also teach them. So sometimes it's it's fun to do that. And uh, whether it's my daughters, whether my son, I think we all feel the same. My wife, my sisters, we all feel that we are so attached to this, you know, the language, Tamil language, Tamil Nadu, India, and also seeing the possibilities of expanding what we could do. There are so many art centers. You played on some of the best, you know, Sydney Opera House and Carnegie Hall and Disney Hall, and where is that in India? And then you feel like somebody's going to do it. No, it's me or it's you. It's us. We have to do that. We have to do this for our younger generation. We have to put that path. We have to suffer for their enjoyment. I think our rest of our life should be for the future generation. The setting up things for them so they deserve the best. And whatever we've learned, I'm pulling you also because I need your support too to set up something amazing in Chennai first. You know where we can we can have a world class concert hall, world class you know opera house, world class London Western or Broadway kind of thing, so that we can put our own culture. We can have tourism, jobs, and all those people flying in from you know America, Singapore to watch this stuff. Why do we go to Broadway? We watch Lion King. We watch you know, Phantom of the Opera. We watch Blue Man Group. What is there in Chennai? There is this hero's movie, that hero's movie. It's fine. It's beautiful. That gives jobs, happiness, but that should not be just the one only way. There should be more ways where people can involve. You know, I want people to say, "My son is acting in Sarapati Garu in Chennai. My daughter is acting as Sita in Ramayana." My, I want to hear that. And in a way where the whole world will be like, because we have amazing talent. Because came Conservatory 12 years back and the Sunshine Orchestra and. Whenever I sit there the year end and listen to those kids, I feel like, oh my God, they're transporting me to Broadway, they're transporting me to London Western, and they're transporting me to Banaras, you know, Hindustani. So I said, why? What are they going to do after this? Go back to movie singing, or go to find collectively something which is fantastic? And that's when I also realized our talent is so good, but we are not giving them the platform to shine. The platform, you know, when you have imagine hundred people together. Creating a statement, creating a musical together, which is world class. You know that people are doing musicals, but it needs to be set in a way. I want people to take a flight from London and France and America to see because culture is the most important thing, and we have such a rich culture. And if we present that in our own way, you know, because whatever little I've learned from you know working with Andrew Lloyd Webber in London West End or working in uh, Toronto stage or working in Broadway or. Working in Hollywood, I want to give. I want to bring that back, and I want to bring all my friends back, who can create the leaders. You know, like in set design and in direction, and stage, and so that's a whole job giving uh, machine, tourism machine, pride machine. You know, a cultural pride. So I feel like that's one of my missions. This is fantastic. And also, you got into music because of. Passion also, isn't it? You are very, very passionate. Of course, even I mean, I was fortunate to know both your parents, and uh, it was a very, very pleasant memory. In fact, when I was going to college and school, the father used to say, you know, in between time, come and play the violin, make some extra money. Uh, so he used to say that because those days, you know, I went to medical college, and he wanted to. Music was a very difficult profession. Nobody knew how successful anybody could be. The backup. They used to say, "Come, we're for free. Our come and ask." All those things. Watching, I will be in the back row. He'll say, "Come and sit in the front row." So all those memories, and then later on, knowing your mother and how that kind of support and love would have also enriched your life. But would you say that you went to music because of they suggested, or because you also wanted I, to? You know, whenever it comes easy, you don't even respect it. And I wanted to become, as I've told in many interviews, I wanted to. I was very interested in electronics, fascinated by creating, you know, equalizers. And I used to get the kits, and I had a friend called Ganesh Raja, and I used to go hang out with him. We would just solder things, and I was excited. And then, and I took the course in highest school, electronics, like vocational. But my mom, after three months, one day she came in and said, "This is it. No more studies for you. You do what your father did." <laughs> she was so definite about it. 
I was heartbroken. I felt like, you know, those days, like if you don't study, people don't study. No, all that thing was. Then once I went in and started playing, I forgot all that. Oh, how old you were at that time? Uh, I think it was 84 when this happened. There was a composer called Ramesh Naidoji from Telugu. He he had a synthesizer, so he wanted me to play that. So the in charge was saying to my mother, she's going to get a job every day because this is one of the busiest music tech type of thing. Then from there, I went to Australia Raja, then from there, Raj Koti, and then and I played for T. Rajanthuji. And yeah, Malayalam first. Malayalam, then Telugu. Malayalam was uh, like my father's friend, M.K. Arjunji, ATO, my father. And after that, this jumped to Telugu. And then Kannada, I was become an arranger for Mr. Vijayana. So I used to go to Bangalore, do Dwarakesh movies as an arranger for me. You also played and arranged? Yeah, played and arranged. Because programming was, I think I bought the first sampler, first microcomposer, first recorder. And so it was like, there'll be a cue to see, oh, who's this little kid who's got all this stuff on TV? <laughs> It's fantastic. And also you, your interest has been so wide range. You have formed this beautiful studio, Prada Studio in Dubai, and also supporting the orchestra. How did that happen? Shekhar Kapoor called me once. I was actually with my kids in Baku and he said, hey, there's something exciting, come to Dubai. So while going back, I went to Dubai and met uh, Excellency V. Malhash. And she said, AR, can you create an orchestra, a female orchestra in the Middle East? I was like, wow. I was like, even the statement of asking was groundbreaking. I said, yeah, sure. And I was like, what am I getting into? And we'll be able to pull it off. So what is the quality of the orchestra? We didn't know anything, but we thought we'll, we'll find our sound, we'll find. So people came before forming the orchestra. I want, I want to book the orchestra. Like we don't even form the orchestra. We don't even know who they are. And once they come in is when we decide what the orchestra is. And we had this auditions at one of my friends called Mesakara who helped me from Berkeley College of Music, Abu Dhabi. Once it was formed, then I realized there's some extraordinary musicians out there and they're completely different from what I'd imagined. And uh, they needed a lot of love, a lot of nurturing and a lot of mental support, I think. So my thing was to how to place them so that they would become one of the best orchestras. Because it's groundbreaking already, the idea in the Middle East and Arab and Eastern European and, and then they've already played with Andrea Bocelli, they've played um, with, with Mitzrayli Raja and another big celebrity who is now working. Oh, fantastic. Raja's project, uh, I was uh, I saw that, that's how I knew the studio was. It's a fantastic studio. Yes, yeah, so if you have an orchestra, you need a studio. And this is why do you need a studio? I said, you build it and you'll know what it is. <laughs> any future, uh, any advice for the Anybody who wants to become a musician, so who have to take up with music for youngsters? I think the most important thing I would say is there's so many different things which are not done in India. We can get inspired by, you know, foreign countries. What did they do? And if you take, put an Indian perspective in it, it becomes original, right? For instance, we never had a music editor. We never had a music supervisor. The director was doing everything. So when I started working in Hollywood, I said, okay, let's keep a musical. There's more jobs creating. There is a music supervisor. Sometimes women are doing music supervision. There's music editing. And then we credit all those musicians who were working. Every, from the pune, everybody's credited. And uh, I feel like they should find their own zone. Nobody's going to tell you what new thing is there. You have to find, this is a space nobody's doing, but it exists somewhere else. So I'm going to be that person in India who's going to open that. So whether it's, there's so many things. People all, I think sometimes they're like sheep. Unfortunately, they just follow what's successful. They don't understand what is there, which is waiting for them. They have to seek something different and that will seek them. And uh, today is also your birthday. Once again, I wish you a fantastic, long, more glorious, successful birthday. And also we happen to record together today with your children and my children. Grandchildren of yours too. <laughs> you have yeah, child. That was unique. Thanks. Oh my God, to, to bring them and make them sit was the biggest achievement. <laughs> Anything you can say about the project, uh, about what we did today? Or? I think you've done it and I always admire 
when people, you know, remember their parents, remember what they give, and you've been doing it on your father's name. Also know your two brothers, you know, Vaidhi and Shankarji. The whole family is talented. <laughs> and that comes from your parents. Yes. And you're honoring them. And it's a great honor for me and for my family to be involved in what you did. And I'm going to remember for this rest of my life. Very, very kind of you to say that. Thanks a lot. God bless. Thank you.